It's a good book. I enjoyed reading it. But it only complicated my problem. Made it harder than ever to decide whether I should consider a legal career. Mr. Hunter, for three years now, you've helped me plan my courses. What do you think I should do? Helping you plan your courses is my job, Bill. But you'll have to think out for yourself the factors affecting your career. Tell me, though, how did the book complicate your problem? Well, I went down to interview Mr. Morley. He's a successful lawyer downtown and head of the Bar Association, you know. He told me all about the opportunities and the work and what he did. And I could just see myself in his place. And so, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you have seen how my client, the plaintiff, did everything in his power to achieve a friendly settlement of differences with the defendant. I have proved beyond the shadow of a doubt that payment of these claims to my client is the only fair, the only just decision. And then I said to myself, boy, that's the life for me. But then this book, well, Mr. Hunter, the author doesn't seem to think too highly of law as a profession. Look here. He says things like dull and of heartbreaking study, years of drudgery, so many unhappy, unsuccessful lawyers. Things like that make me wonder whether I'm right in listening to Mr. Morley. That's how the book has complicated my problem. Here I have the advice of two different people and they completely disagree. Well, Bill, you're going to have to decide whose advice you'll take. But how? Have you considered each of them as an authority? No, sir, but... You remember the method you learned in your civics class, don't you? Yes. Why not apply it here? You can sit over there, and when you're through, we'll plan your courses after you've judged your authorities. Yes, by judging his authorities, Bill can decide which one to follow. And he must judge well, for it's a vital problem, a problem all of us face from day to day. There are conflicts of authority in nearly everything we read and hear. In casual conversation, on the radio, at lectures and speeches, in library books, newspapers, magazines. For instance, read this. Offhand, how would you rate Bronco Lewis as an authority on breakfast food? Or compare this headline with this. It's plain that these two newspapers have different points of view. But which is nearer the truth? How often do you find that various books do not agree? How can you judge the authors in order to know which to believe? There is a method that will help us whenever we come up against a conflict of authorities. And we can learn about it by watching how Bill judges his authorities. Mr. Penner, author of The Professional Careers, and Mr. Morley, prominent lawyer. He will judge them on three counts. The internal evidence, the author's experience, and Bill's own experience. First, internal evidence. That is, whatever clues to authority can be found in the speech, magazine article, or book itself. One question is most important. Does the author present his case clearly and convincingly, recognizing facts, and interpreting them soundly. Based on his study of the book, Bill decides that Mr. Penner does score on this point. Checking the book closely, Bill finds that the publisher is reputable and the copyright date is recent. There are footnotes throughout the book and a bibliography as well. These are important as signs that the author has consulted other authorities and appears to be reliable. So there is the internal evidence of Mr. Penner's authority. 
Now, what of Mr. Morley? What did he have to say? Why, Bill, there's nothing as satisfying as this kind of work. I have so many opportunities to work for justice and equality. Interpreting the law takes a lot of skill, you know. Of course, it's a long, hard pull to achieve any kind of success as a lawyer. But once you've come through it, you'll look back on it with pride. Yes, Bill, this is wonderful work. Well, the internal evidence shows Mr. Morley also to be clear and convincing. But does the fact that law is satisfying to him mean that it will satisfy Bill? No, what he said had almost nothing to do with Bill. Well, that's a question. And there's no evidence to indicate that Mr. Morley has considered all sides. He was asked a question and he gave an answer. On the basis of internal evidence, which authority would you choose to follow? Bill chalks one up for Mr. Penner. Now to examine the author's experience. What is there in the author's background that qualifies him to speak on the topic? Bill doesn't really know anything about Mr. Penner. Here, perhaps who's who will help. Of course, there might be more information in the library, but here in who's who is some interesting material. So, Mr. Penner is a PhD and a psychologist. He's a vocational guidance expert and on the staff of the Vocational Guidance Institute. That speaks well for Mr. Penner. And so many people come to see him. He certainly is an authority on vocations, the qualifications needed and opportunities available. But he has never been a lawyer himself. So Bill makes a note that Mr. Penner speaks from observation. What about Mr. Morley's experience? He himself has come through the years of drudgery of which Mr. Penner writes. He is a lawyer, a successful one. And in his position as head of the Bar Association, he meets many other lawyers, both successful and unsuccessful. So let's say that Mr. Morley speaks from observation and from experience. So on the basis of the author's experience, how would you judge the authorities? Bill gives this point to Mr. Morley, and the score stands one to one. Now, what will Bill's own experience tell him about these authorities? That is, which authority seems more valid to him? Mr. Morley's very enthusiasm may have helped contribute to his success. Does Bill have that enthusiasm to help him overcome obstacles? Or is Bill more like Mr. Penner, cautious in his judgment of himself, careful to analyze what he wants from his work? Mr. Morley is happy and successful in his law work. Yet, as Mr. Penner points out, many lawyers are not successful. In the last analysis, Bill's own experience, his knowledge of the subject and of himself, must guide his judgment, just as your own knowledge and experience must serve as a guide when you judge authorities. Internal evidence, author's experience, own experience. By these three standards, Bill has judged his authorities and come to a decision. And what did Bill decide? Well, what do you think? What would you decide in judging these authorities? <laughs>